Welcome to Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. I'm Daniel Pineda. We have a great program this week. We have our news stories, community bulletin board, and 55 plus news. But first, a social media reminder. You can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one. Also on Facebook and WERA 96.7 FM. And now on to our first news story for this week. As of Saturday morning, September 4th, reports show the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Arlington increased by 243 for the week, up to 16,736. We at Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News will continue to monitor the situation as the summer comes to a close. As for vaccinations, as of September 4th, 152,929 Arlingtonians have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. The number having received two doses was 137,834. Based upon our best estimate of Arlington's population over the age of 12, the percentage of 212,800 eligible Arlingtonians who are at least partially vaccinated is a little over 71.8%. However, the fully vaccinated percentage is still only 64.7%. On Thursday, September 2nd, we received the following email message from Arlington County Parks and Recreation. Welcome back. Our community centers will reopen after Labor Day weekend. We look forward to seeing your smiling masked face soon. For hours and programming, visit the community center's web pages. We follow these instructions through Sunday afternoon, but found only some listings with new hours of operation. Arlington Mill Community Center, 909 South Dinwiddie Street, Sunday, closed, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Aurora Hills Community Center, 735 18th Street South, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Fairlington Community Center and Park, 3308 South Stafford Street, Sunday, closed, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Langston Brown Community Center and Park, 2121 North Culpeper Street. Sunday, closed, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thomas Jefferson Community and Fitness Center, 3501 South 2nd Street. Sundays, closed, Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Lubber Run Community Center, 300 North Park Drive, Sunday, closed, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Madison Community Center and Park, 3829 North Stafford Street, Sunday, closed, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Long Bridge Aquatics and Fitness Center, 333 Long Bridge Drive, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sunday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The following locations were still listed as being closed due to COVID-19. Barcroft Sports and Fitness Center, Carver Community Center, Charles Drew Community Center, Gunston Community Center, Walter Reed Community Center and Park. 
And now on to our next news story for this week. Fans of the Portobello's Cafe will be saddened to hear about the following post on the company's website. To all our valued guests, it is with great sadness that we announce the closing of Portobello's, an American cafe. Our lease expired last year in June 2020, and this year we were unable to come to an agreement with the landlord on how to move forward both during and after the pandemic. We want to thank all of our wonderful guests and employees for supporting us over the last 15 years. What began as a little 54-seat restaurant on the corner of North Pollard Street, tucked away, grew into a place that had welcomed many guests that became like family to us. We are extremely humbled that so many embraced our restaurant and that we were able to succeed as long as we had. For a restaurant to survive and thrive right outside Washington, D.C. for 15 years is an accomplishment of which we can be proud. We could not have done it without all of you. Thank you all for your love and support. We'll be officially closed on September 25th, so please come through. The restaurant is located within a small one-story shopping strip at 2109 North Pollard Street and has been open under its current management for 15 years. And now on to our last news story for this week. The number of employees assigned to Amazon's HQ2 in Arlington has now exceeded 3,000. According to a spokeswoman for the company, Amazon is seeking more than 2,500 new corporate employees for a variety of technical and non-technical jobs. According to Amazon, it is now the largest job creator in the United States. They reported hiring more than 450,000 people during the pandemic. The company will offer more than 20,000 personalized career coaching sessions with Amazon recruiters. Software development engineers will lead coding workshops. Attendees will hear from Amazon CEO Andy Jassy and longtime Amazon executive Dave Clark. Also participating will be New York Times bestselling author David Epstein and Carla Harris, Vice Chairman of Global Wealth Management at Morgan Stanley. Construction continues on Metropolitan Park. The first phase of HQ2 construction, including two office buildings. Clark Construction employees told visitors to the National Landing Farmers Market that crews are working on the 10th stories now. That does it for the news for this week. Now on to our community bulletin board stories. Hi, and welcome to CBB. Our first CBB event is for families. It's called Summer Farewell Campfire. The whole family is invited to join in at Long Branch Nature Center for lots of old fashioned fun. This engaging program will be filled with entertaining activities which may include stories, special animal guests, games, songs, and of course, s'mores. Now, when they mention s'mores, they ask that you bring your own supplies. This is like a line in the music man that goes, you can have your fill of all the food you bring yourself. But at least they say, please. You'll need to register both children and adults since children must be accompanied by a registered adult. For more information, call 703-228-6535. You can register online or call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 612-951-B. That's on Saturday, September 18th from 8.30 to 11 o'clock a.m. at Long Branch Nature Center at Glen Carlin Park, 625 South Carlin Springs Road. Next up, free walk-in COVID-19 vaccinations are still available for individuals aged 12 and up at the following locations. Arlington Mill Community Center at 909 South Dinwiddie Street on Monday through Friday 
from 11 o'clock a.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. and on Saturday and Sunday from 10 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Also at the Walter Reed Community Center at 2909 16th Street South, Monday through Friday from 11 o'clock a.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. and Saturday and Sunday, 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. The vaccines are free, safe, and offer the best protection from COVID-19. Get the facts and then get yourself and your child vaccinated. Please bring any form of identification to confirm your identity. Examples include utility bills, pay stubs, insurance cards, or a driver's license. As for the specific vaccines being offered, you can get the Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson based on availability. For Moderna Pfizer, individuals will receive instructions at the end of their first dose on how to obtain their second dose. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a single shot and does not require a second dose. With case numbers still on the rise, obtaining the vaccination is something we all owe to the rest of our community. We now turn our attention to the arts. The Arlington Artists Alliance is presenting a new event called Travels. It's an all-member exhibition in which artists were tasked with creating work based on their travels, both real and imagined. These works will take you on imaginary journeys from seascapes to cityscapes, mountains to deserts, and even the artists' own backyards, in addition to depictions of planes, trains, and automobiles. The show runs through September 24th from 10 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. at Gallery Underground in National Landing, 2100 Crystal Drive, Suite 2120-A. Finally in CBB, continuing with the arts, we now cry, a vest! However, this is not in honor of National Talk Like a Pirate Day. AVAST, A-V-A-S-T, is short for Arlington Visual Arts Studio Tour. It's a chance for art lovers to visit the studios of 48 Arlington artists. At each location, visitors can meet the artist and see their work, processes, and studio spaces, many of which are rarely open to the public. Different studios feature paintings, ceramics, metals, photography, and more. The weekend event will begin with a launch party on Friday, September 24th from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. at the Cody Gallery at Marymount University. The event itself will take place on Saturday, September 25th and Sunday, September 26th from 11 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. You can get free tickets by going to https colon slash slash arlingtonartstudiotour.org slash. Now it's time for 55 Plus News. Howdy, and welcome to 55 Plus News. Well, the big news for seniors has changed a little, but it's still that the 2021 Northern Virginia Senior Olympics is returning for its 39th season with an opening ceremony on Saturday, September 18th at 9.30 a.m. at the Thomas Jefferson Community Center. That's at 3501 2nd Street South in Arlington. Over 50 events will take place from September 18th through September 30th at 17 venues throughout Northern Virginia. All events are open to the public. For information, you can email nvso1982 at gmail.com. Although registration closed on September 6th, you can still come and be a spectator. Now the next event is called, What's on My Plate? Now some of you might be thinking, that's all wrong. 
Everybody knows that who's on first, what's on second, and I don't know's on third. Well, cut it out. What's on my plate is actually an educational presentation. It's a way to build healthy eating habits one goal at a time. A Virginia Cooperative Extension representative will talk about my plate as a resource and why it matters and how to set daily food goals. You can start simple with small changes. One change might be to reduce the amount of Abbott and Costello in your diet. You can register online or call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 911-500-4. And that's on Wednesday, September 15th from 11 o'clock a.m. to 12 noon at Lover Run Park. 200 North Columbus Street. You got to be 55 and up and 55 plus membership is required. Next up, there's an old saying that two's company and three's a cloud. Well, that's not quite it, but I wanted a way to introduce the next event, which is called What is the Cloud? Nick England, technology guru, will provide the answers to questions like, what is the cloud? Where does it go? Is it secure? Is there a cost? Mr. England will also answer questions about OneDrive, iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, and other common cloud-based storage for your computer and wireless devices. For more information, call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 911-403-1. That's on Thursday, September 16th from 1 o'clock to 2.30 p.m. at Arlington Mill Community Center, 909 South Dinwiddie Street. You gotta be 55 and up and 55 plus membership is required. Now our last 55 plus event is called Virginia Reptiles. No, this has nothing to do with politics. It's a chance to join Long Branch Nature Center naturalist Bobby Farley for a virtual presentation on the reptiles of Virginia. The presentation will include species that can be found right here in Arlington. You'll learn which animals are common, which are dangerous, and which are harmless. This interactive program will consist of a live PowerPoint presentation. For more information, call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 911 four zero zero dash one one and that's on thursday september 16th from six o'clock to seven o'clock p.m you gotta be 55 and up 55 plus membership is required and this is a virtual event anyway that's all i got for 55 plus news We received late notice from the Arlington Philharmonic that they are going to be holding their Pops for Pets concert on Sunday, September 12th at 4 o'clock p.m. at the Lubber Run Amphitheater at 200 North Columbus Street. If you have the misfortune to only hear a rebroadcast of this show and miss out on the chance to go to the actual event, here is a sample of what earlier events have sounded like.
it's hard to believe it, but 50 years ago today, an important event happened. Two important events. I was born and... Oh, thank, you. thank you so much. I look forward to the dinner. Um, but also, The Sound of Music was released on film. It came out in 1959, and then it took a few years of Hollywood percolation for it to make it to the big screen to, of course, very famous effect. And it's, it's a great movie. It, it's, you can enjoy it really just as a pure celebration of music, or you can enjoy it ironically. But either way, it's a really fun movie to watch. And we're going to play for you the entire movie in 10 minutes, okay? It moves very quickly. And here's what you're going to hear, all right? So listen for these. I'm gonna, mostly these are names of tunes. But of course, we start out with ringing bells. And then we have the sound of music. How can love survive? A lonely goat herd. My favorite things. 16 going on 17. So long, farewell. Do re mi. Edelweiss. An ordinary couple. No way to stop it. And finally, climb every mountain. Here's the sound of music. By the way, this was written, of course, by Richard Rodgers, but uh, Robert Russell Bennett did all of Richard Rodgers' orchestration. So he's the one who put this suite together, and he's kind of the unsung hero of Rodgers and Hammerstein, Rodgers and Hart. He was doing all that amazing orchestration in the background. It's really fun to play his arrangement as well. I had the good fortune to catch the Arlington Festival of the Arts on September 5th at the intersection of Highland Street and Washington Boulevard in Clarendon. Here is a slideshow of some of the artwork they had on display. And that concludes this week's show. We will be back next week with more news from Arlington. Meanwhile, be careful, be safe, and be well. Mm -hmm.